Hi there, and welcome to Making Sense of Odds, Ratios, and Relative Risk Estimates in SPSS Statistics. Odds, Ratios, and Relative Risk Estimates are known as measures of association. So these are measures where, rather than just doing a statistical test to establish whether or not a relationship is statistically significant, here we wish to measure how strongly related one factor is to another. Now in healthcare applications, these kind of values can indicate if exposure to a particular factor can increase the risk of an outcome or conversely even have a protective effect. Now we can also use confidence intervals to show if the effect itself is statistically significant. And there are two methods here. One is based on calculating the odds and the other is based on probabilities. Now before we look at these two values and see how they're calculated within SPSS statistics, let's just take a moment here to remind ourselves of the difference between odds and probability values. If you want to work out the probability of rolling a six when you cast a die, you know that that is one and six because there are six possible outcomes and only one of them is a six. So in percentage terms, that works out as 16.7%. It has a p-value, a probability value of 0.167. It simply means that on 16.7% of occasions, you will roll a six. So one of the things we like about probabilities is that we can convert them very neatly into percentages and that makes sense, intuitive sense to us. Odds are different. Odds look at the number of occasions where you're not getting a six compared to the number of occasions where you do get a six. And in that case, the odds of getting a six are one over five. In gambling terms, it's one to five on, or five to one chance of getting a value other than six. So that means that for every six rolls, five of them will be a number other than six. And it also means that odds, of course, are calculated differently from probability. The upshot of all this is that when we're comparing odds ratios and relative risk estimates, we're looking at a ratio value that's based on odds and a ratio value that's based on probabilities. So odds ratios are simply the ratio of the odds, i.e. the ratio of the odds of factor A or category A in the presence of category B and the odds of A in the absence of category B. Now, because it's based on odds, of course, it's regarded as more difficult to interpret in relative risk. But odds ratios are here to stay because they have certain mathematical properties which make them kind of useful, particularly when it comes to other statistical analyses such as logistic regression and we want to see the relative impact of different input or predictor variables upon an outcome. With relative risk, uh, we're looking at the ratio of probabilities, i.e. the probability of an outcome in an exposed group to the probability of an outcome in an unexposed group. So let's look at an example of how odds ratios and relative risk ratios are calculated in SPSS statistics. Now in this example, we're going to look at the associated risk between smoking and angina. It's important to bear in mind which one is the risk factor and which one is the outcome. So here, the smoking status is the risk factor and the outcome is going to be angina. And we can use the SPSS crosstabs procedure to compute both the relative risk factor and the odds ratio. Let's see how that's done. So here in SPSS, we're going to call up the uh, crosstabs procedure by going to analyze descriptive statistics and down the crosstabs. And we're going to put the variable smoker, smoking status, we're going to put that in the rows and the variable angina, we're going to put that into the columns. I'm going to ask for some sales, I'm going to ask for a row percentages. I'll also ask for some statistics here. I'm asking for the chi-square test just to show if it's statistically significant. And I'm just clicking on risk here. This will give me both the odds ratio and the relative risk uh, ratio values. Now, which variable goes where actually does make uh, a difference here to these uh, association calculations. And I'll talk about that in more detail in a moment, but it's not just actually which one goes in the rows and which one goes in the columns. In fact, the order of the categories themselves, yes, no here, you can see yes is, is the first category and no is the second category. That also has an effect upon it. And there's a couple of tips we can give with regard to, to coding them correctly. So it's just easier to interpret the results. So if we click OK here, this is going to produce some results for us. You can see a case processing summary here. I'll just hide that to make it, to make it clearer. Then we have our, our actual um, crosstab itself. 
we can see a chi-square test here indicating everything's less than 0 0.01, so everything's statistically significant, so less than 0 0.05 and less than 0 0.01. And we have our risk estimate table down here. So we're looking at the cross tab here and the risk estimate table. Let's return to uh, the slide deck and just walk through this output so that we can interpret it uh, more carefully. Okay, let's just take a moment to look at this cross tab that we saw a few seconds ago in SPSS statistics. You can see here that I've emboldened some of, some of the percentage values here just so that we can compare uh, the correct groups here. I can see that 68.2% of those people who were smokers, who are smokers in the sample, that they have a history of angina compared to 44% of the non-smokers. Uh, this is statistically significant, it's a pretty big difference. Uh, not just at the 0 0.05 level, not just the 0 0.01 level, but actually it's less, the probability is less than 0 0.001. So a pretty big difference there. Now, when we turn our attention to looking at the odds ratio and the relative risk ratio, the construction of this cross tab is kind of important because it affects how the calculation is made and therefore affects how you interpret things. And I've deliberately uh, constructed it in a particular way and I want to pay attention to that now so that it makes it easier should you wish to do the similar thing when you come to analyzing your own data. So here, for example, we can see that the risk factor is in the rows. I've deliberately put smoker in the rows here, this variable smoker, and I've put angina, history of angina in the columns because that affects the calculation. That's a good, that's a good sort of um, rule of thumb to use. The second thing is, is that the yes, no groups themselves, I've deliberately ordered them so that the yes group appears first and the no group appears secondly. This affects the calculation, especially for odds ratios, because it depends on which is being divided by the other. And and therefore it affects your interpretation of the odds ratio. Um, you'll notice that within the data set there actually had two versions of the variable angina and the variable smoker. Um, this is the second version I'm using here because I've used the recode procedure to reverse the order so that so that the category for yes occurs first and the category for no occurs secondly. And that was deliberately done to make it easier to interpret the odds ratio and, and the relative risk ratios. So it's just a good tip should you wish to do something similar when it comes to analyzing your own data. Okay, let's look at how the odds ratio to begin with is calculated. The first part of the calculation for the odds ratio simply focuses on these two uh, cells here, these two frequency counts here. Um, and all we do is for the yes group, for the smokers, who the people who are, who are smokers, we are dividing here 1,552 by 723. That gets us a value of 2.147. That's the first part of the calculation. And the second part of the calculation, again, just looking at the, the no row here, the non-smokers, it's, of course, 3,427 divided by 4,298. That gets you a value of 0.797. When we look at the ratio of one to the next, so you can see why the order is important here and how it affects the ratio, we're dividing 2.147 by 0.797. That gets you a value of 2.69. That's exactly the value that you will see calculated within SPSS statistics when you request uh, risk estimates. Uh, and it gives you an odds ratio. Now, what does that mean? Well, it simply means the odds of having angina are 2.69 times greater for smokers than for non-smokers. This is a measure of association. It is not a causal statement. And the, the deal here is to remember that we're focusing on odds, not on probabilities. Calculating the relative risk ratio was a very similar approach, except this time we're just focusing on uh, separate pairs of cells. This time we're looking at yes divided by the total, not yes divided by the no group. So we're looking at smokers here. That works out as 1,552 divided by 2,275, which is the total number of smokers. That gives you a value of 0.6822. And for the non-smokers, that's 3,427 divided by 7,725. That gets you a value of 0.6822. 4436 and the ratio of one of those to the next of, of 0.6822 to 0.4436 is 1.538 and how do we interpret that that simply means the probability of having angina is 1.54 times greater for smokers than for non-smokers
whatever the baseline probability is. Now we have to bear that in mind. It might be that the probability of having angina is only, you know, 0.5 percent or something like that. In which case, a 1.54 uh, increase isn't that great an increase. Whereas if the baseline probability was 30 percent, then 1.54 times the greater likelihood, greater probability of having angina is is actually quite quite a larger increase. So we do have to pay attention to the baseline here. And here is the risk ratio table as it's produced within SPSS. You can see here that the odds uh, risk here is shown as 2.69 and the relative risk ratio as 1.538, just as we calculated earlier on. Now, these two values are somewhat different from one another because one's looking at odds, one's looking at probability. And generally speaking, however, these two numbers start to become much more similar to one another when the proportion of people with the condition occurs relatively rarely, i.e. once you get below about 10%. In this example, the proportion of people with the condition was closer to 50%, and hence the two values start to diverge somewhat. But we might ask whether or not these two uh, measures of association that we've calculated here are sufficiently large enough to be regarded as statistically significant. And to help us make that judgment, we have these 95% confidence intervals that have been calculated for both of the statistics. Um, the 95% confidence intervals provide an indication as to how much these values are likely to vary from one sample to the next. Now for both the odds ratio and the relative risk estimate, both of the intervals are producing values which are greater than one. They're positive, so they're showing, uh, it's, it's likely that they're showing an increased risk effect that exists in the population. So in other words, they're probably statistically significant. If one of the values was above one and one of the values was below one, it would indicate that you know, there's a possibility that it could increase the effect, but there's also a possibility that it could decrease the effect. And that's much more likely to happen when you've got a smaller sample size and when you've got values or risk estimates which are, which are quite small in and of themselves. In this case, we've got quite large sample size and the risk estimates are relatively large. So we're seeing a positive effect uh, for both uh, of our calculations. And therefore we could say, or make the, make the assessment that these, both these association values are you know, statistically significant. Just a final point on the use of uh, odds ratios and relative risk estimates in healthcare research. Now in healthcare research, we have something known as observational studies. And one kind of observational study is known as a case control study. And the case control study consists of trying to find people with a specific condition or disease, and then finding a comparable group of people who don't have that condition or disease to compare them against. And looking back in time, looking at their history in time to identify some sort of key factor or stimulus to which they have been exposed in the past, which might have affected that condition. Uh, with a view to attempting to determine if the exposure level was different for each group. So here we're trying to figure out whether or not the exposure level was different for each group in the past. In those situations, odds ratios are regarded as the appropriate type of measure for those kinds of studies. An alternative approach is a cohort study. And this is where you start off with a particular exposure of interest and you're looking at people who have been exposed to that then finding a comparable, a comparable group of people who have not been exposed to that stimulus, following them over time to identify if they have had different outcomes and attempting to determine if the outcomes are different for each group. In these, those situations, the relative risk measures are regarded as appropriate for those kinds of studies. So just to summarize that, odds ratio, look at the odds that a case was exposed divided by the odds that a control was exposed. So it's looking at the exposure, whereas risk ratio is the probability that an exposed case gets a disease versus uh, the probability that an unexposed case gets a particular disease or condition. So here the focus is on the disease or condition.